Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today we'll be playing another premiere draft of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. This will be the final premiere draft of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty this time around, because in about 24 hours from this recording, they'll be swapping out for some more Streets of New Capenna premiere drafts. So without further ado, let's take a peek at our incredible pack one pick one, the Wandering Emperor. This is one of the strongest cards in the entire set, sees a ton of standard play, four mana for a three loyalty planeswalker that you can cast at instant speed and use her loyalty abilities at instant speed the turn you play her. She she gets to plus one to give a creature a plus one plus one counter and first strike until end of turn, minus one to create a two two, and minus two to exile a tapped creature and gain two life. All three of those abilities being in incredibly powerful things to be able to do at instant speed and then you just stack up a bunch of value by getting at least a two for one off of her like the turn you cast her exiling a creature and then when it passes to your turn you can get a two two immediately that's immediately just like two two plus Anyone removal spell worst case scenario must contend with me wandering emperor is just an incredible card and easily going to be our pack one pick one there pick two we have brilliant restoration which can be fun if you have a deck absolutely chocked full of artifacts and enchantments you need to make sure that they are a lot of expendable ones too so that you can fill your graveyard pretty quickly but uh, this is definitely a lot weaker than the wandering emperor a ton more mana a lot less consistent not only does your deck have to be full of artifacts and enchantments but they have to be in grave which sometimes that doesn't even happen i did play a three color deck with brilliant restoration it's like green white blue all enchantments and i still had games where i was getting one or two cards back from grave late game because just nothing had really died so i'm not that high on brilliant restoration that being said this pack is pretty weak the strongest cards are like nazumi prowler is a pretty decent ninjutsu card pretty nice combat trick to be able to do um, after you know where all the blocks are happening Bamboo Grove Archer is nice at slowing down your opponents in the green decks. Master's Rebuke is nice green removal. Increase Infiltrate is fine. It's really just Nazumi Prowler or Brilliant Restoration. I actually think I'm going to go Nazumi Prowler over Restoration. There aren't a lot of white decks where I would play Brilliant Restoration. So not only... Like, sure, it is a white card, so it's taking an on-color rare. But it's not necessarily one that makes the cut anyway, so I feel like it's like just as likely to make the cut as an Azumi Prowler, even though Nazumi Prowler is dipping into a secondary color. See what we have in pack one, pick three. Another pretty weak pack. The best cards here are like Voltage Surge being instant speed removal. It's honestly about it. Everything else is pretty filler. The Roaring Earth is not as good as I had hoped it was the first time I played this format. It's just a little too slow. Both halves of the card um, haven't been that great. Orochi Merge Keeper isn't that great. There's a common version of this card that's just better because you get your Mana Dork at instant speed or you have an Aura version you can cast. Um, Replication Specialist is fine if you've got a lot of artifacts in your deck because if you untap with this and then you play another artifact, that's huge value, but... Yeah, I'm honestly probably just on Voltage Surge. Not that great of a pack. A bunch of filler stuff for whatever colors you end up in, but nothing you really want to take pick three this pack is a bit of a different story though we have a flame discharge is pretty solid red removal we have azusa's many journeys is a very good green saga essentially a two mana three three also gain some life off of it there's the careful cultivation which is the better version of that green mana dork that we saw that's fine geothermal kami is pretty fine there's a lot of great enchantments to bounce to your hand and recast um, Sky Swimmer Koi is pretty okay. A lot of artifacts in blue, and flyers play well in the format. I think the strongest card in this pack is Zeus's Many Journeys, and I'm not uh, really tied to anything but white right now, so I think I can just scoop that up. Flame Discharge would give me two solid red removal spells, but I'd really try pretty hard not to end up in like red white as a color pair. I just don't think that color pair works out particularly well. Most of the Samurais and the red white payoffs didn't end up being that powerful. All right, back one, pick five now. We have a Bearer of Memory, a filler green card here. Um, bunch of random aggressive red cards that aren't that great. Reinforced Ronin's fine, but the rest are not very exciting. Pretty weak pack overall. The white card, blue card aren't great. Clawing Torment is probably the best card in the pack, just being good in aggressive black decks, especially like ninjutsu stuff. But... Don't think we're headed in that direction. I think I'm just going to take Bearer of Memory. 
It's definitely Bearer of Memory or Clawing Torment. I suppose the Clawing Torment would be fine in black white. Our one black card is an Injutsu card already. We could be pretty aggressive with Wandering Emperor. Sure, I think Clawing Torment's better than Bearer of Memory when it's in a deck that's good for it. Bearer of Memory fits into a little bit more strategies. Pretty weak pack again. We've got a Bearer of Memory. We've got the Ninja's Kunai, which is okay removal. That'll fit into anything. Got a Blade Blesser that's kind of whatever. Subduer's kind of whatever. Very middle-of-the-road cards. Very middle-of-the-road pack. Just go for a Ninja's Kunai. Fit into whatever we play. All this stuff here. There's another Clawing Torment. There's Tamiyo's Safekeeping, which is a really nice trick in the green decks. Gain two life, give something hexproof and indestructible. So counter your opponent's removal spell, win the fight during combat, all that kind of stuff. It's just a really nice green trick. I actually like it enough to maybe take it here over a Clawing Torment. We're just needing to decide between green or black here. I'm not that high on Moth Rider Patrol. It's fine. One mana, one one flyer helps you get your two mana ninjutsus in, but doesn't do too much other than that. It's a lot of mana to tap creatures down. It is a warrior, so it triggers the samurai and warrior cards too, but never found it all that exciting. More filler stuff, a favor of Jukai, Kitsune Ace. Upriser Renegade's probably the strongest card, but not by a lot. Have to be a good modified deck for that. I'll just take the ace here. Filler white card since we're pretty much guaranteed to be playing white. We have another ninja's kunai. Seems good to me. Been a really low quality pack one in my opinion. I don't think there was anything all that good in any colors throughout the first pack. At least after the first few picks. I guess I'll take a seven tail mentor again. Just taking the filler white cards because white is a color we're pretty much guaranteed to play, but almost everything we saw pack one here was filler outside of the Wandering Emperor, unfortunately. Double kunai is okay though. Um, I like careful cultivation over the malicious malfunction and just. I feel like this card's a little narrow to be playing in best of one. If it were traditional draft, Malicious Malfunction's pretty nice to have on the sideboard, but take the careful cultivation. There's a lot of, like, green-based decks that just have way too many big creatures that don't die to Malfunction that just don't really care if you cast that. Uh, this is all nonsense. And this is nonsense as well. Let's see what we open up in pack two here. Another incredible white card, the Farewell, being able to exile all artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or graveyards. You choose one or more, so if your opponent is an artifact or enchantment-based deck, this can be a one-sided Wrath, a one-sided board wipe. But if not, still a board wipe and limited, which is really hard for your opponent to play around. Still a very good card. I'm going to take Farewell here. There's an argument for taking Naturalist and just committing into green-white enchantments here, but I think Farewell is really good. We could play some kind of weird control deck now that we have Farewell plus Wandering Emperor. That's pretty nuts. So yeah, the next best cards in this pack are kind of a tie between like Naturalist, which is good if you're already leaning towards green-white, and then Behold the Unspeakable is the best card in the pack. Just... Um, as like a pack one, pick one kind of thing, because it's just a really powerful mono-colored card. Huge card draw, it slows down your opponent's damage, and then it puts out a potentially pretty big flyer. Um, that's really easy to ninjutsu back to your hand. So that card is very good. All right, definitely taking all the good white cards over anything else. Pretty big fan of Selfless Samurai. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it or another Samurai or Warrior attacks alone, it has lifelink to line of turn, and this can sacrifice itself to give a different creature control indestructible later in the game. So I like Selfless Samurai a lot, to the point where I'll take it over Intercessor's Arrest, which is solid removal. But again, Selfless Samurai just does a lot of work for only two mana. I'd like to take that here. There's also Okiba Reckoner Raid. Pretty great if we did want to just lock in on black here. Uh, Ecologist Terrarium is nice because it leaves us open and it mana fixes us in whatever colors we end up in. But again, 100% to play white. We'll take the good white card here, Selfless Samurai. Okay, nothing in white in this pack. We have a Mukatai Ambusher in black. We have a Jukai Naturalist in green. 
that's about it. There's a lethal exploit in black as well, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and scoop up this naturalist this time around. Slightly more green cards than black cards. This gives us a nice start to a green-white enchantments deck. I guess we don't have a lot of white enchantments, which is a little awkward. We don't have any white enchantments. Huh. That is really awkward. But we do have good green ones. We have Cultivation and Azusa's Many Journeys. The potential upside on Naturalist is a lot higher, but it doesn't currently work as good with our deck or as well with our deck as the Abisher would. I think I'm still going to take it. I'm going to take the Naturalist here. Hope for the best. All right, we get a nice white enchantment this time around, an Era of Enlightenment, two mana to scry two, then gain two life, and then get a 2-2 first striker onto the boards. This card is quite good for only two mana. A lot of stats, just takes a little while to get them all. Very happy to take that. Now we have Golden Tail Disciple, very solid white card. It's also an enchantment. It's going to slow our opponent down, gain us some life. Pretty happy to take that. Nothing going on in green or black here. Best card outside of our colors here is maybe Sky Swimmer Koi, maybe Asari Captain, but the Samurai stuff doesn't uh, doesn't tend to go that well. Um, now we have a Sunblade Samurai, which I like a lot. Light Paws as a rare, unfortunately, doesn't really do anything. You have to be playing a lot of auras in your deck, and they have to all be beneficial auras, auras that you'd want to slap a lot of them onto this one card, which there just aren't enough cards like that in this format to really pop off with Light Paws, so Sunblade Samurai ends up usually just being better. 5 mana, 4, 4 Vigilance, or if you don't have the mana for it, then you can channel it to gain some life and pull out of planes. Fine with that card. Well, maybe we're just supposed to be red-white, because red does look wide open. We can take all these random commies flares and stuff. I'm definitely going to take it this pack, because there's nothing playable in any other color. The enormous energy blade is just way too slow, because it's three mana to play and two to equip. You're giving plus four, plus zero, sure, but you're tapping whatever you attach. So you have to equip the turn before you attack with the card. So we'll just take the commies flare there. Decent black cards here, like a Chain Flail Centipede's fine, Reckoner's Bargain's fine. Don't love you're already dead, though. Red does have a Steelbreaker or a Tempered in Solitude. Maybe we push into red because it's pretty open. I don't really love the Tempered in Solitude. I found it relatively difficult to find positions where I'm only wanting to attack with one creature in the color pair because they are pretty creature heavy. So I think I'd rather just take a Steelbreaker here. Big dorky creature. If I'm potentially pushing into red. Um, this pack is pretty much nothing. I guess there's Iron Apprentice. Which will go in no matter what. Maybe Skies from Rikoi. We open it up. I mean, we're definitely white. Yeah. If we open up a blue rare, I could play a Skies from Rikoi. No idea what the last color of this deck is going to be. Because there's really not been any massive, massive signals towards specific color outside of red. And good red cards are just... About on par with, like, solid cards in any other color. Like, average cards in other colors. Don't like any of this. I'll take Crackling Emergence, I guess. Do wheel the Asari, Captain. Maybe you kind of just have to be the uh, the Red-White Samurai deck. Aki Ember Keeper is a Warrior, which is a relevant card type for that. And with Double Ninja's Kunai, we could have some modified creatures. So we get 1-1s one when they die. And... We don't need to take the Kitsune Aces very highly, that's why I took Ember Keeper over it. We're already going to have more than we want. And we get an Ambitious Assault. Yeah, I suppose red is kind of the one open color here. We do open up another good green card, the Zeus's Many Journeys here. That being said, there's also a really solid colorless card we can play no matter what. Bit slow, bit slow. Two mana to play it, then two mana to tap it and draw a card, put a charge counter on it. Or remove a charge counter from it. Once we've removed all three charge counters, so once we've used the ability three times, we're spitting out a 1 1 pilot that can crew as though its power were two greater. So it can crew the bank buster. So, yeah, I'll take a bank buster here. Really solid little value engine. Uh, whatever colors we end up playing. Uh, Michiko's Reign of Truth is huge. This is a. An absolute beating. It can do a lot of damage. There's just a lot of artifacts and enchantments in the format. Um, 
We have five artifacts and nine enchantments right now. The number is obviously going to go down because we're not going to play all of these colors, but it's still going to be pretty high. Michiko's Random Shoot is still going to be a lot of damage for such a cheap mana commitment. So we're going to take that here. It's also in our core color that we're definitely playing. So Michiko's Reign of Truth it is. Now we have a Moth Rider Patrol, which is fine. Definitely a little better than Red White because it has the, uh, the Samurai and Warrior bonus because it is a Fox Warrior. So this is a nice card to be your one uh, creature that's attacking alone. Searchlight Companion's also fine, and Moth Rider Patrol might be more likely to wheel. Yeah, I suppose I'll go Searchlight Companion. I'd like to wheel this Moth Rider Patrol back. Don't think I'm going to be splashy enough to try to play the 4-mana uh, 4-4 four 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 Flying Trample here. It's in blue, red, and white. Just take the colorless card again. Very solid one. 1-1 one, one in the sky and a 1-1 one, one on the ground for 3. Very good card to ninjutsu. Now, there's a subduer, or another golden tail disciple, or a befriending the moths. Also a spinning wheel kick in green, which is kind of wild if you can afford it. It's a lot of mana, but it's a huge, huge card. Huge play. I think I want to take one of these white cards. Don't have a lot going on at later mana costs right now. Looks like I have a lot at 3, 2. It's kind of like Befriending the Moths. Not generally the strongest Saga ever, but when you don't have a lot to do turn 4 and later, seems like a solid pickup to me. Oh yeah, we're getting the hookup on green this pack. I guess we could have went green-white. Maybe we still can. Tales of Master Shishiro is pretty strong. It's going to be 7 power and toughness for 5 mana, but again, it is slow. The first two turns you play it, you're not putting a creature on board, but you are making it so one of your attackers is vigilant, which kind of lets you still hold up a blocker that turn, which is nice. I do like Tales of Master Sashiro here a lot. Seismic Wave's pretty strong in red, but I'm going to go for Tales of Master Sashiro. It feels like we're getting a green hook up here, and we really are, because now we get a Fade into Antiquity, which is a fine removal spell. Exile an Artifact or Enchantment. Again, this format is absolutely full of those. Yep. Green, white, and shamans is what we're going to end up being in the very end here. We'll take an Era of Enlightenment here. Great card. Repel the Vile's fine. Uh, but I don't want to run a massive amount of removal spells when I have Farewell in here. I guess I don't really have any removal spells right now, though. Just a Fade into Antiquity. But that's fine. I, I believe we'll draw Farewell every time we need it. <laughs> we'll draw perfectly. It'll all be good. Any auras... Or shrines. We don't have any auras or shrines for shrine stewards, so that's not a thing. We'll just take another befriending the moths. Katana's okay in here. We do have a few samurai or warrior, but I think befriending the moths is better. Now, a bunch of nonsense. I'm just going to. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could maybe play Regents Authority. I was going to say I'd just rare draft the uncommon here for vault progress, but. There's a non-zero chance we play a Regent's Authority. I'm not going to play Network Terminal. I don't think I'm splashing any of this off-color stuff. I guess I could splash in a Sorry Captain or some Red Burn. feel like probably not, though. It's more likely to get played than anything else, though. We'll put the Network Terminal in the sideboard. Another Seven Tail Mentor probably not playing. I actually do like Commune with Spirits. Uh, this card basically, it slots into any green deck and it replaces a land. So instead of playing a 17 land deck, you get to play a 16 land deck with Commune with Spirits. That way, if you draw Commune with Spirits early game, you just play it and turn it into a land if you need that land. And if you don't draw it early, if you draw it late game, then you turn it into an actual play in the late game. So we could even just take two and play a 15 land deck here. Although we could play another Golden Tail Disciple, but I actually do like running a couple Commune with Spirits. Just a, just a fun little trick to uh, to help you flood out a little less. Play those and treat them as your 16th, 17th land. Just make sure you have enough green lands that you can always cast them turn one. So we basically put these in the land pile. We cut a plains and a forest instead of cutting two forests. And then, uh, and then that's our mana. That's our 17 lands. Okay. 
let's see. Not a particularly high creature count. Eight creatures and a bunch of sagas that help out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen creatures if you count every saga as a creature. So that's a pretty low count. That means combat tricks aren't going to work as well. We're just not as consistently going to have creatures on board, especially because most of our creatures are sagas that flip later. So I don't love the regent's authorities. So we could just cut those two and call it a deck. I guess we do have a careful cultivation, which sort of counts as a creature, makes a 1-1 monk. Um, but that's still like 16 creatures total if you count every saga and careful cultivation as a creature. So, I mean, this kind of just looks like the deck here. We dirtled around with so many colors so often, we only really got to cut two cards there to make the room. And the Commune of Spirits also made it so we didn't have to cut as many cards as you normally do. Because those let us cut two lands here. Yeah, I'm just going to roll with this pile. Not super happy with it. Obviously the Wandering Emperor and Farewell is really strong, but... I don't know. We'll talk more on it in a moment after we beautify the lands. Alright, here is a look at the final Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Premier Draft. In a way, we're ending it with a bang with the Wandering Emperor and Farewell in the same deck. Pretty bomb-heavy deck here. We have a nice amount of two-mana plays, but some of our filler cards are very filler, like a couple Kitsune Ace with no vehicles. Just a couple two-mana tutus in here um, that have to make the cut just to uh, just to up our... our uh, our non-land card count. We were bouncing around with a lot of colors during the draft. Couldn't really find a very committal second color. It felt like there was nothing great running around. The most open color was red, and that was just because we were seeing a lot of like cheap red burn and stuff. But all the red creatures and all that were pretty filler that we were seeing. We didn't see like a really, really big, really good reason to go into red. Didn't get like past a red rare or a twin shot sniper. Kumano faces Kakazan, anything like that. It was just like, well, not a lot of great cards in this draft pod, but the red ones are the most decent, and I felt like that wasn't a big enough reason to try to jump into the red-white samurai deck, but that would have been the deck we had the least amount of filler in if I jumped on and committed to that early. That being said, decided to stick to green in the end because while we didn't get a ton of green cards i think the quality of green cards that we got is higher than what we would have had in red we have some pretty powerful ones like jukai naturalist azusa's many journeys uh tales of master sashiro fade into antiquity and tamio safekeeping were pretty good like every single one of our green cards is pretty good i would say is above the filler level um that being said, we didn't get a lot of them, which means that while all of our green cards are good, we had to fill out the deck with the white cards that we ended up drafting, which are definitely some filler, like Seven Tail Mentor and a couple kits and AAs. So that's the biggest flaw with the deck. Pretty high disparity between our high power level cards and our low power level cards. We have ridiculously powerful mega bombs like Wandering Emperor and Farewell, and then we've got very filler, filler kind of nonsense creatures like kits and AAs and Seven Tail Mentor. So we'll see how things go here. Our general deck idea is going to be just slightly slamming down some two drop sagas for good value lots of uh, early damage as well with like michiko's reign of truth being a very big creature for the cost azusa's many journeys being very big for the cost um, just playing all that stuff early turn or early turn in the early turns and then some big sagas like befriending the moths to get those creatures in the sky or get them vigilance and attacking with them so that's how we're just trying to compete in the early game and just race our opponents and if that doesn't work out we've got some value plays with like bank buster and then the huge bombs to flip the game into our favor if it falls if, if we fall behind the wandering emperor and farewell are both cards that can turn that right around so see how it goes as we head in to game one all right, here we are on the play. Three lands and Commune with Spirits, really showing off the power of Commune with Spirits here because we cut our 16th and 17th land for two copies of Commune with Spirits. The reason is we can always just turn one Commune with Spirits and pick up a land if our hand is low on them, and if not, we can pick up an enchantment a lot of the time. Unfortunately here, I guess we're not quite showing off the power level because we didn't hit an enchantment, but that was still much better than having a fourth land in hand because now we just dug through that four land pile or that three land pile and still hit another one after that. Wow. So we're, we've got a clump of lands out of the way now. That's for sure. 
Is this a, uh, no, it's a pilot. We'll start with a selfless samurai then. If this were a warrior, I would have played that first, because then we could still get the lifelink attack turn two. There's a Jukai trainee from our opponent. They're on blue, green, and red. The trainee, of course, gets to block or become blocked as a 3-3, so we can't really swing in against that unless I throw a cultivation onto samurai. That could actually be potentially worth it. I think I'd rather just play era here. Be pretty hard to race a 3-5 lifelink though. Unless they blow it up and they're green, blue, red. They could maybe bounce it, that would be bad for me. But any of their green and red removal should be damage based and should be hard to do that too. Just slap this aura out. We definitely don't need to channel the cultivation as the 1-1 one, one mana dork this game. Should have played the force since it was revealed anyway. All right, fade into antiquity, exile the enchantment, little one for one there, that's fine. Pick up a ninja's kunai. All right, I'm gonna use the era of enlightenment. We'll play the forest this turn. Another land and a farewell. All right, well. So we sort of have a plan. Um, don't know if I slam down this kitsune ace. Am I just leaning on farewell now? I'll just pass turn. See what happens here. Not exactly getting any more aggressive by putting the Kitsune Ace down. It still doesn't attack into the 3-3. So, if I want to get aggressive, I have to blow up Jukai Trainee with my Ninja's Kunai. Alright, I think I should probably play and equip Kunai so I have that backup plan of blowing something up here. It looks a little less suspicious because I'm actually doing things with my mana. Um, but the way Farewell works is I can exile everything except artifacts when I use it now. So it's not actually committing any more to the board that's going to die to this Farewell. Which is nice. I don't think I've sequenced things perfectly this game. Obviously I should have played the Revealed Forest, but that didn't matter too much. And I should have played Kunai a turn earlier, but that didn't matter too much either. So... Some sloppy plays, but nothing that would have like affected the overall course of this game so far. Invigorating Hot Spring. That can dump a bunch of counters on stuff. Luckily, we can uh, exile that with Farewell. Another Era of Enlightenment. Hmm. I don't love playing nothing here. I also don't love dropping an Era when I'm planning on Farewelling, because I'm not going to be able to get through this Bosage or reach it Skyward. Otherwise, yeah, I guess we're just going to pass turn. Need to find a way to kill this branch or Boseju. And Farewell's going to be that way. Fortunately, we did put a chunk of lands on bottom. Oh, we scryed a land to the bottom and... Uh, the Community Spirit Flans are on bottom in a random order. Tanuki? That seems like farewell time to me if we hit the land for it. Give it a plus one, plus one counter. Missed out on their haste there. I might have to scry into lands here. There are a lot of lands on the bottom of my library, so it could take a while if I don't. All right, there's the land we need and a naturalist afterwards is fine. I might farewell and exile just creatures. They get to keep their hot spring, I get to keep my air of enlightenment. Don't know if that's overall worth it. Take seven here. We're definitely not exiling artifacts. We're going to at least leave our ninja's kunai behind, but... We'll see. Alright, at least Hot Springs down to just two plus one plus one counters. 
They're not putting else on the anything else on the board. I hate that. Hate that a lot. They're in blue. They could have a counter spell. They could also just have a bunch of lands in hand. We don't really know. Can't really afford not to do the farewell now. Let's gain two life first. And let's go for it. This gives any creatures they play a plus one plus one counter in haste. I feel like that's too big a deal when they're running like Greater Tanuki. I think I have to trade the one Era of Enlightenment for the one Invigorating Hot Spring here. Don't believe we have any graveyard recursion, so we'll uh, we'll exile the graveyards. I can double check real quick. It does not look like we have anything to bring things back from grapes, so we may as well. Cool. So they still have a lot of cards. So I don't know what they are, though. Ecologist Terrarium is just more mana, so that doesn't matter much. Can be a plus one, plus one counter onto one of their creatures, though, for two mana. And Tawashi Guidebot, that matters a bit. Luckily, we still have a Kunai to blow it up, but they will get to draw a card off of it because none of our creatures will have haste here. Play a Naturalist first. That'll allow me to... I don't get much value off the plus and plus one off of the first use of Befriending the Moths, um, but then I can play this and equip a Kunai. That'll be a creature a little sooner now. Guardians of a Boro, 3-4 Defender. Not exactly going to break through that on the ground. Ooh, the Wandering Emperor. It's very tempting, but I think I just kunai this guy bought. Emperor at instant speed. Preserve as much loyalty on the Wandering Emperor as possible. Uh, I guess I can't afford to kunai and ascend Emperor. So we'll just pass turn. No Spell Pierce. I don't know what their general strategy is here, so I don't know what to be playing around. Just like green, blue, red stuff. Just like Guardians of Aboro. So... Honestly, they could have a Spell Pierce. They could have a Spell Pierce, because this is not like a very massively established like archetype my opponent's playing here. So there's really no telling. Let's hope not. Okay, that's at least no Spell Pierce. Finally, I'm home. Now they do have a 6-5 Tanuki, so Wandering Emperor can get hit real hard. Actually, probably should have just not, <laughs> not played the Wandering Emperor, so I can exile that Tanuki Play later. Hard. But I'm going to have uh, 7 toughness to block Tanuki, so we could be okay. And we drew into Sunblade Samurai, which makes it so we're very, very okay. Most likely. No, Essence Capture is what it is. Okay, weird. Double blue counter in the three color deck. This is, it's going to be very hard to play around stuff from our opponent here. Let your blade do the talking. Alright, let's just get the board really wide and really large so we can block Tanuki with everything to keep the Wandering Emperor on board. I did not play the Wandering Emperor very ideally here. Another invigorating hot spring it is. Makes the Tanuki even bigger. Oh, it modifies the Guardians of a Boro so that can attack. That's true. That is good. It is powerful. Attack Wandering Emperor with both. They have eight power there. Seven toughness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chomp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine toughness. So we get to keep our Kitsune Ace. So 
This looks good to me. Unless they have a trick in their hand. Alright, no trick. Fade into Antiquity. I can exile the Hot Spring to get rid of three plus and plus one counters and haste from their next creatures. Feels worth it. So now they can't haste something out to kill the Wandering Emperor with next turn. So this turn I know I can just exile the Guardians and I can start plussing the Wanderer up again. My judgment is final. Did not play this ideally at all. I should have waited on the Emperor to exile Tanuki. Um, I shouldn't have put it out when they just played Remember Tanuki. I was so tied to my initial line that I didn't even react to my opponent's plays the turn before. I just had my blinders on because I was so excited about the Emperor. Played pretty bad there. But it looks like she's still going to take over the game for us, luckily. But we lost like three creatures we didn't need to lose because we could have had the Wandering Emperor exile the Tunuki and just had all those creatures on board to block their other stuff. Instead of having to make that giant block to save the Emperor. Jukai Preserver, Befriending the Moths is the draw. Keep a 4-4 to block with here, send the lifelink in, and make a samurai. Probably be playing this. Our opponent's not in black. So they're not going to virus beetle us or the long reach of night us. Those are a couple cards that do incentivize you to keep lands in your hand so you have something expendable to discard. Um, I'm threatening lethal here if I attack with everybody. Just see if it happens. If it doesn't happen though, they kill the Wandering Emperor, but then we still have more creatures on board and we're gonna flip a 2-4 flyer out. Alright, lethal happens. All right, that was a very loose game, but luckily Farewell and Wandering Emperor are sick bombs. Still gonna get there for us and we'll start off 1-0. Here we are now in game two. Beautiful, beautiful hand. Obviously need some more land to get to the Wandering Emperor, but we have several plays until then. And we've already drawn the second planes. There we go. That's all the mana we need to drop a Wandering Emperor. We are never attacking into the trainee, but if I play Naturalist, I can attack back and gain the life that they dealt to us back. So this maybe gets them to not attack because of uh, our ability to gain the life back if they don't play another blocker here. That's a massive issue. Restoration of Aegonjo, one of the best white rares. Not quite as good as the Wandering Emperor. I think it is better than Farewell, though. This card is sick. It's just so much for three mana. So three mana, you're guaranteed a two for one because you're pulling a planes into your hand. Then you get to discard a card and return a permanent with mana value two or less from a grave to the battlefield. So it ramps you up if you discard a land and pick it up. Or plays a two drop for free. And then uh, this turns into a three four Vigilance that spits out a one one every time it attacks or blocks, which is absurd. It's a very, very good card. So now what are we doing? Slap a kunai onto Naturalist and just blow up a trainee. Seems fine. Could also put more creatures on the board for now. I'm cool with that too. We'll play the Kits and Ace. But now... We just have to commit one mana into killing a creature in the future because we've got our kunai equipped. Probably should have put the kunai on the Kitsune Ace instead of the Jukai Naturalist because Jukai Naturalist is more likely to draw a removal spell from our opponent than the Kitsune Ace is. Jukai Preserver makes that trainee a 3-3 baseline, a 4-4 when it's blocked. Okay, we have the Wandering Emperor mana now. I don't know what I'm going to do about the Architect of Restoration. That 3-4 is going to do things to me. 
that I don't like. Um, really don't like my mana here. Wish I had one more so that I could shoot something and play the Wandering Emperor this turn. If they don't play Tales of Master Sashiro, I mean, it would actually be pretty fine here. Maybe we do make our Ace a 3-3 and it gets to attack in here. Maybe trade with Preserver, but then that gets closer to the Tails flipping. <clears throat> Weirdly enough, I think I'm going to play Tales of Master Sashiro. I think I'm just trying to get as much power toughness on my board as quickly as possible here. Or at least trade off into theirs. This is going to make it so Tales of the Master Sashiro flips into a 5-5 pretty soon. We're two turns until that. Having a 5-5 on the board might be our best way to deal with Architect of Restoration. Just have a creature that's big enough to block it single-handedly. I can also like block with Naturalist and Kunai it, but the problem with it is the Vigilance. I just can't do anything to that with Wandering Emperor. All right, we're taking another three down to 14. The opponent had another sick two for one play, the Blossom Prancer. Really, really good green uncommon. Um, so now we're on Wandering Emperor and Kunai as the plays for the turn. Can actually Wandering Emperor block Architect of Restoration with Naturalist and make it a 4 4 first strike? Since it turned into a 3 3 off Tales of Master Sashiro. That's. If our opponent doesn't have a trick in hand, that could go really well for us. If they do, it could go disastrously for us. We could lose the game off that, but if they don't have a trick, we win the game off of it. I'm willing to take that risk. Now, I was going to say what is more likely is our opponent just has removal that they use pre-combat, and then we've got no shot. Ooh, wow, that works. That very much works. Put the Architect of Restoration into the sky. Oh, you've certainly got it. And they put it in the sky again next turn. Oh, they don't put it in the sky this turn, but they did make it a 4-5 off Generous Visitor, which means we don't get to first strike it to death. I can still first strike it to death if I kunai and first strike. It's probably actually better to just exile Blossom Prancer here because Wandering Emperor is just destined for death when they have Befriending on befriending the Moths next turn and we have no Flyers. So because Wandering Emperor is going to die any anyway, we just get max value immediately. So what we do is we have Naturalist and Kunai trade into the Architect, have Wandering Emperor exile Blossom Prancer that leaves them with a 3-3 and 2 one ones, and then we just make a 2-2 off Wandering Emperor. And then we have a 5-5 five -five and a 2-2. Two -two. That's the plan. Feel like that's what we're supposed to do here. Although, I can do the block, the Architect with Naturalist, give it first strike, shoot the Architect. Then we still have a Naturalist on a board, and it's a 4-4 four, four Naturalist, because those plus one, plus one counters. Wandering Emperor will be at four loyalty, so it goes back to our turn. Then we minus two to exile the Prancer and kill that as well. Actually, doing the math on it, the plus one plus one counter is better. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Show them how we greet our enemies. Because we leave the naturalist out this way, and they'll have to attack Wandering Emperor to kill her. So even though we're we're still just expecting the Wandering Emperor to die here, this way at least we keep the giant naturalist, and we're forcing them to attack her. Which can be value as well because it gains us more life. And now we've got a 4-4 four, four lifelinker just hanging out. Which is pretty big. Um, they're just going to fly over our creatures next turn to kill the Wandering Emperor, so we attack both here, I believe. Maybe should have drawn the card pre-combat here, but I like being able to crew this if they blow up Sashiro's Living Legacy. So I'm going to draw the card during their turn. So I'm still holding up a blocker on the ground if they're planning on doing that, because now they can Befriending the Moss, just a 1-1 one, one here, and the 1-1 one, one can kill Wandering Emperor. And then if they have removal to kill Sashiro's Living Legacy, they're threatening to hit us still. They don't threaten to hit us on the ground if we leave Bankbuster up. 
because we respond to their removal spell by crewing our bank buster. And there you go. Now we don't take damage on the ground. Unless they want to trade their trainee into bank buster, which is probably okay with me. Maybe not. I'm out of gas and this draws me a lot of cards. I'm gonna rest the bank buster. That would work even if it wasn't a creature. They can enchant an artifact with it. Why wouldn't it? Oh, I got it. Oh my god. It became summoning six, so I couldn't draw the card off of it anymore. I forgot about that interaction. That sucks. Still have much to learn. So that would have been the reason not to do it. Just gaining summoning sickness there. That's brutal. Well, that was pretty smart from our opponent. Them having the two removal spells to be able to, to do that, to cheese us out there. That was a pretty nice line. Cheese us out of our card draw. This is not playing around the double removal there. And I forgot about summoning sickness turning into a thing. All right, we're still gaining a million life, so we're at 22, but we do need to draw some action. And they chump block naturalist with the companion here. Oh my god, that's horrible. Oh, well, there's so many mythic uncommons in the set. Cap attack wreckers, definitely one of them. Exiles an artifact or enchantment when you ninjutsu it. And now we're just out of cards. Yeah, that bank buster line was not ideal. We lost out on one card draw. Which was one more chance at farewell, which would have been our only real out at this point. Yeah. So, if the top card of our library was Farewell, then we cost us the game with the Bankbuster line, but otherwise it didn't matter at all. So, there's a 1 in 24 chance that I would have won if I if I had drawn the card off Bankbuster. I wouldn't win, but I'd still be alive, and I could maybe win. Every other draw in our deck does not save us here, though. Does not give us another turn. This is over lethal no matter where I block. I block there and take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I'll just kill a one one, I guess. Alright, rough one. Good beats. Alright, here we go. Round three on the play. I'll keep this. Got our Samurais at the ready. Turn one Kunai. Ooh. Chico's Reign of Truth onto a lifelinker. Can be huge. We saw that happen last game. Gain us a metric boatload of life. Ecologist's Terrarium from our opponent. They're green and black so far. Pick up a red source. Could be splashing red. They could be five color though. That would be pretty cool. Um, I like playing more enchantments here. I think I'm gonna play Azusa's Many Journeys, get more enchantments on the board before I use Reign of Truth, and then we'll uh, spend our one mana to equip this kunai. Gain two. Alright, now we get to play the Kitsune Ace and the Reign of Truth. Play the Reign of Truth first and see if they have a response here. Alright. Sick, we get the 5 damage life gain swing on there and we are at 30 now we have another turn of michiko's reign of truth next turn for another big life gain swing 
If I attack alone... One of the big reasons I wasn't that uh, worried about getting the, the ace out soon. Because we only get the lifelink if we attack alone anyway. Shigeki Jukai Visionary. They have a blocker now. It's going to be a 2-4 blocker. Still not big enough to block Samurai. But that gets it out of Ninja's Kunai range. Oh wow, now we have Befriending the Moths here as well. I actually might rather have them chump block this samurai than have this jump over them, but I'm definitely going to play this this turn, and they're probably not chump blocking anyway, so I might as well get one more damage in. Or, you know, my life total doesn't matter anymore. I actually should give the ace flying and attack both and just stop gaining life at this point. Now we're guaranteed to deal three to them, and we're dealing eight unless they chump block with Shigeki. Yeah, that's definitely the better line. We don't need to keep getting life at 30 life over here. Hit at Sugu, Devouring Chaos. Hopefully a bit too slow for our opponent. Next turn they can spend the three exile a card at random from the top of their library and uh, deal damage to us. Well, to any target equal to that card's cost. So how do we kill them here? We don't get through on the ground anymore, so we just give flying to our biggest creature. To do a bunch of damage. That's the plan. Attack with two ground creatures, they block both of them. Can Kunai to kill whatever they block with? Two for one here. They kill the ace, they kill the Kunai. It's safekeeping. I think I'd rather hold safekeeping. Although I can sacrifice the Samurai, if that matters. Yeah, I think I'm just going to hit in the sky and pass here. Oh, I can just kunai their face. I forgot this can hit players. I, should, <laughs> I just had lethal my turn. I let them untap for nothing, and now they could have something that gains them life here. Okay, we'll just try to kunai their face in the end step. Tamiyo safekeeping to gain two. I think they had a green mana up last turn. I think they had jungle hollow, so they had that either way. Uh, but if a single creature gets in, we still just kill here. We have our own safekeeping if something goes wrong. Alright, they scoop them up. That was loose. Forgot Kunai could hit the face. For the final Kamigawa Neon Draft, Neon Dynasty Draft, we will have the loosest draft of the return. Two and one now as we head into game four. Here we are in round something. Round four. Careful Cultivation is going to ramp us up a bit here. We definitely need to hit white sources, but I kind of like this hand. We have Cultivation to Searchlight Companion at minimum. We've got to fade into Antiquity as Interaction. And if we hit the white source, we'll have a Michiko's Reign of Truth for plus two, plus two. Because we'll have this enchantment and this artifact. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, am I going to get ninja out? The ninjutsu curve out is very hard to beat. Alright, they didn't have the 2-drop here, at least. If they have the Bounce the Creature Ninja, um, we're going to get demolished here, because they're going to bounce our token. We have like 7 white sources in the deck. And we have, okay, we have 8 white sources and 2 commune with spirit, so we have 10 ways to try to dig for it. Alright, here we go, there we go. Moon with spirits. Oh, we need it bad. We are going to need to beat this Tatsunari Toad Rider, so we're going to need double white by the end of this game. I feel like that's about the only way we're beating the Toad Rider. Is, uh, is a farewell later on. Scry 2, dig for more lands, double white, 
Take it. It's all the lands we need to get to farewell. And we hold up all these blockers so we don't get ninjutsued too hard. There's the fourth mana. They can now cast their Moon Snare Specialist if they have it to bounce our token and kill it. I guess Toad Rider gets to get ninjutsued here because we can't really block it well. Dokuchi Shadow Walker. Hit us with a 5-5. Five, five. Take a big hit here. Gain our 2 life and we will snap past the turn. Probably chump. 5 damage. Replication Specialist is the play. Hope for no artifact from our opponent. I don't think we fare well just yet because we know Tatsunari is still in there. It's a very big deal. They don't have to play anything else to kill us though on this board state, so we need to force them to play more cards. We have to do something here. Also makes it less suspicious. If we exile just creatures, then our sagas get to kind of pop off. So we can play all our sagas, actually. As long as we fare well next turn, we can play sagas this turn. Because they won't be creatures for now. Fortunately, the sagas don't really do much of anything currently, but at least we get them on board, I guess. Gonna have to chump block. But hopefully they dump out their hand here. They have six mana, they can play Tatsunari in a three drop. Down to two cards in hand. Leech Gauntlet. No, double Leech Gauntlet because Replication Specialist. And now they don't have the mana to play Tatsunari, which means they're not committing that to the board. Brutal. Their hand just isn't lining up to run into a farewell that well. Because this isn't even just them necessarily like playing around a farewell. This is like, yeah, they have a replication specialist, so they're going to get as much replication specialist value as they can. They just can't afford Datsunari and replication specialist value. Um, yeah, I don't really have a choice at this point. Tatsunari Toad Rider is back. And the reality chip. Oh dear. Let's exile the heck out of the reality chip. And then we still have the mana for Naturalist, but I think I'd rather play Many Journeys to get that to flip sooner. Get a 3 3, which is actually relevant against their 3 3. A 2 2 lifelinker, not. Super relevant currently. So the Toad Rider can make another Toad if they play an enchantment. It makes a 3-3. Three, three. And it has an ability to give the Toad Rider and the Toad um, unblock ability by anything except a Flyer or Reach. So our 2-4 Flyer can block their 3-3s three, all day. So I actually feel like we're kind of okay against Tatsunari. Unless they do exactly that. Because that blows up our one flyer and gets them a 3-3. They don't want to blow up the flyer. Oh yeah, because Tatsunari becomes a 4-4 anyway from Twisted Embrace. Yeah, that was an exceptional draw for sure.
And now we are just dead to Tatsunari. At least I can block the two, the three three with my two four. If I attack in though, I'm taking seven. Going down to five. Just drop naturalist, and we're banking on drawing the wanderer or something here. But Tatsunari just kills us because they got it around the farewell. More bombs for us. Play the Reign of Truth against us, which is another enchantment, which means they're going to drain us for one life this time off of Kaimi, the legendary frog. They're going to get plus two, plus two to a creature this turn. Force a chump block on Tatsunari, pretty much. Ooh. Now they can't attack both. They just attack for five. I guess they can, but... Snap block. Okay, maybe we still have a shot. If we draw into... Wandering Emperor, we definitely have a shot. If we draw into anything solid, then... I wouldn't say we definitely have a shot, but we kind of have a shot. If we draw into anything solid. Uh, Sunblade Samurai is okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I don't feel, I don't feel like just straight up dead anymore, because they can't give flying reach anymore, so just 4-4 uh, four, four and, uh, uh, and a 3-3 three, three here, and a Michiko's Reign of Truth, that'll be a 1-1. One, one. Alright, if they don't have a combat trick like a suit up, deal with all their creatures currently on the board, and we still have one left. And they flip into a 1-1, so they have a 1-1 versus whatever creature they leave. But they drew into the lethal exploits, which will win that fight. And Bokutai Abisher. Now we're pretty dead. I can trade an Abisher, but I'm taking three guaranteed this turn. And their Portrait of Michiko is a 2-2 because they now have an artifact and an enchantment. All right, down to five it is. There's a land for our opponent and an era of enlightenment for us. That leaves us dead on board. We play this and they attack all because they know we have nothing in hand. Rough. Just the right kind of interaction from our opponent and our draws were a little too slow. The right interaction at the right time kills us just quick enough that they don't have to deal with the Wandering Emperor. Rough final draft here. Oh, I thought that was the end. That's two and two. Oh my god. I thought that was two and three. We're not two and three, we're still in it to win it. It's not over yet. All right, here we go. Game five. We are two and two. This is the deciding game to see if we can get a nice average run out of this one or dump it into the two, three realm of defeat. I'd like to pick up another land here so I can double land next turn with Azusa's Many Journeys and then play my fourth land on turn three, which is pretty spicy. Uh, so I think I pick up... Probably another white source. Get us to our double white for the Wandering Emperor and farewell. Playing against a green-white deck. Looks like a mirror match. That's the same kind of card we'd play. However, our opponent is on the play, which means they get the advantage. But Azusa's Many Journeys can kind of turn that right back around. And we'll have just as many lands as they have. They're playing three mana cards this turn. We're playing four mana cards now.
when they pass back to us. Goshintai of Boundless Vigor. Gives itself a plus one, plus one counter in every end step. Okay, so... I'm gonna... Friend of the Moss, not very good on an empty board. Seven Tail Mentor, not very good on an empty board. I think I just have to play the Ace and the Reign of Truth now. Not getting a lot of value off this Reign of Truth, though, unfortunately. Just waiting for that to turn into a nice standalone creature, much like the Azusa's Many Journeys. Spirited Companion from our opponent, great value play. Get a 1-1 one, one and draw a card. And they can sacrifice the Selfless Samurai whenever to give something else uh, indestructible. It can't give itself indestructible though, so I'll just take this trade. And they're going to keep buffing up the Goshintai of Boundless Vigor. Okay, now Seven Tail Mentor is pretty solid. Because when it dies, we can put its counter onto something else. But I actually think I'm okay making it a 3-4 for now. Don't really want to put all my eggs in one likeness of the seeker basket all right goshintai still popping off our opponent's still on three mana here all right flip our reign of truth and let's get in there with likeness of the seeker shall we they are down to 20 so it is 21 to 20. And we're just going to play double Befriending the Moths here. It's just go ham in the sky. Just do whatever we want up there. They do have their fourth mana now. So they have the mana for a... Uh, uh, Boseju reaches skyward. They do not have that though. They play a Blade Blizzard Kitsune. 2-2 two -two double striker. Goshintai is up to 5-5 five, five status. Any Samurais or Warriors here? Seven Tail Mentor, but that's the creature I want to die the most. I ask because I am tempted to play Selfless Samurai and start gaining a bunch of life. But we probably go Befriending the Moths instead then and just deal a ton of damage with this portrait of Michiko. Just on the outrace them plan here. Bunch of flying damage. Goshintai have shared purpose. All right, we're gonna have to race fast because that's double Goshintai now. And that's a counter onto their double striker. But yeah, now in their end step, they get two one ones on the ground or they get two plus and plus one counters onto a shrine. Either of the two and they get both once they have two mana up. They're just gonna pass, no attacks here. Makes me feel a little better at racing. This is our final turn of uh, flying. We're definitely giving it to the portrait. That'll be the most damage by far. Okay. Like to play two more enchantments here. The only way to do that is to play careful cultivation into Golden Tail Disciple. Then we hit for two more damage. What creature do we not want to die? Don't want Likeness of the Seeker to die, so I'll throw Careful Cultivation onto that and tap that for the mana to play Golden Tail Disciple. Because I'm, I'm one mana away from playing Golden Tail Disciple and Careful Cultivation without having to tap the creature for mana. Yeah, I just want to do as much damage as I can this turn. That way I can try to close the game out with double Imperial Moth. So we're going to put two more enchantments on the board to do more Orchid of Michiko damage. We're down to seven now. 
See what they've got here. They were stuck on mana for quite some time, so they could have some big late game plays. They're reading over the board state a lot. Could be some amount of removal. This double shrine is going to race really, really quickly. It's going to take us three attacks to kill them in the sky. We're going to attack them for two with the moth, put them down to five. Next turn, we'll attack them with both moths, put them down to one. And then the turn after that, we'll find lethal. So we need to be able to survive three attacks, which is kind of a problem. Against a generous visitor that can put counters on their double striker. Against a Goshintai. If our seven tail mentor dies on blocks, though... We can make our Imperial Moth a 3-5 uh, a flyer, so we attack them for 3 next turn, putting them down to 4, and then when we attack them the turn after that, we kill them, so we actually kill them in 2 attacks in the sky if we get a counter on this Imperial Moth, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to chump with the Seven Tail Mentor to put a counter on this Moth, so 2 attacks in the sky is lethal. The Wandering Emperor is the draw that's pretty dang huge. Thanks to Likeness of the Seeker, I can play Samurai and still hold up the Wandering Emperor, which means now I have a way to give one of these moths indestructible when they try to kill one of them. All I need to do is make sure I don't die this turn, and these moths don't die this turn. And I can really protect myself with Wandering Emperor, and I can protect these moths with the Selfless Samurai. Feels pretty good. They send in the Blade Blizzard. We'll go ahead and... Um, suppose Trump with the Disciple. Played extra safe here. Got our samurai in response to removal. If it's damage-based removal, we could even wandering emperor and put a plus one plus one counter on a moth so that we still have samurai left behind for the next removal spell. If they're trying to use two removal spells to kill these moths. Alright, careful cultivation gives reach to the Goshintai of boundless vigor. That's going to be good enough. We cannot get past that now. And it's absolutely massive. It's a huge problem now. We have to draw into removal that can kill an untapped creature. Because Wandering Emperor sure cannot. Only exiles tapped creatures. That's huge. It's a huge play from our opponent. We know one of these moths is going to get in at least, so I can put them down to one life by attacking with both and then putting a plus one plus one counter on whichever one gets in. Do I play Wandering Emperor here? So that I can get the additional plus one plus one counter? That way I can put a counter on this moth and it turns into a four... I think I do play, because then this turns into a 4-6, right? And then next turn, if I put another counter on it, it's a 5-7, which means it can attack into that Goshintai without dying. And if I draw any other ways to add power, I could immediately win here. And yeah, by making this moth a 4-6, they'll have to block this moth with the Goshintai, which means this one definitely gets in. So I could put another count on that and hit for 3 if I really want to, but then I'm sacking the bigger moth to do that. Now you've done it. Hat's coming off. I could sack... Actually... Remember your training. I think I definitely do that because I have Samurai. 
I think I buff this moth and attack both. They block this when I give indestructible. I hit for three. They're at one. I still have two flyers to attack the turn after this. Probably the plan. There's a bank buster. I kind of want to just draw a card off of this immediately. See what it is. Jukai Naturalist. Interesting. Doesn't really affect anything, though. So we get a counter on this moth. Show them how we greet our Attack with both of them. They block one. We give that one indestructible. And they're at one life. Which means next turn, attack with both of them again. I'm assuming this is them trying to go for the block. They just did it too soon. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no trick there. That's the most suspicious thing I've ever seen. Uh, we resolve that, because if this combat resolves, our opponent just dies. We don't respond until we have to. Exile, target enchantment, brutal thing you definitely got it well now what now we probably just lose can't get through that goshintai I have to draw into my fade into antiquity I play naturalist or I hold my 4 6 up? They're attacking with just a 7 7 double strike, so it doesn't really matter how big my blocker is. Yeah, we'll just play a Juka naturalist. Oh snap, they are attacking with a 5 5 as well this turn. I forgot about Tails of Master Sashiro. But yeah, kind of irregardless, I just have like one turn left drawn to an out that's not really going to change whether i have a four six up to block or a two two lifelink all right last second fade into antiquity let's go i guess that doesn't win anymore if they kill the wandering emperor this turn Attack the Wandering Emperor with Sashiro. And Blade Blizzard. We have to block both to save the Wandering Emperor. If we do, it's all chump blocks, because the only way I could kill Sashiro is if I block with Portrait. And if I block with Portrait there, that means I have to block there with the Jukai Naturalist. So this dies in first strike, which turns Portrait into a 5-5 five, five block in their 6-6. Six, six. So I can't block and kill anything here. Um, they're attacking the Wandering Emperor with more than enough stuff that the Wandering Emperor is guaranteed to die, so we just make our best blocks, don't we? Because if I block there and there, Wandering Emperor still takes one, two, three, four? Actually, no, Wandering Emperor does not die if I block the two biggest ones. Wandering Emperor goes to one, which still leaves a uh, removal spell as an out. If I can get rid of that Goshintai, if I can get my fate into Antiquity... Yeah, that's kind of our only out to this game. So we just chump block these two, and it doesn't matter what order we did it. As I said before, they're both going to turn into chump blocks. So I would act actually rather do it here, so I at least gain two life here. One, two, three, four damage. This isn't going to go how you think. Land, and let's see, fade into antiquity, we've got two draw steps to hit it, because I have Bankbuster to draw a card. 
Ninja's Kunai. Put them to one. All right, we draw our card. Don't have the creatures to double kunai. In order that I have the mana, I'm one mana off as well. I need to spend six mana, one to play, one to equip, one to shoot. If I can survive, <laughs> I could kunai them twice. We probably don't reveal the next kunai. I probably just equip this one. Don't let them know I have a second one. Strike fast and strike hard. And they're probably trying to kill me this turn regardless, but... Now we do everything in our power... To just... Just survive this one attack and leave one creature on board. We're gonna have to do so much math here because they're just gonna just all attack. I'm not sure we can survive. We have to block the double striker. No, we can't. There's no way we survive and still have both these kunais if they attack all. All right, we like straight up just immediately we have to chump block the the kitsune. Oh, if they send a if they send a bunch of stuff at Wandering Emperor again, then we can survive. But if they completely disregard Wandering Emperor and attack us with everybody, I don't see how we live. Because we chump block Kitsune, we'd have to block the other, the Goshintai, the Trampler, with as much toughness as we can, six toughness. And then we would still get trampled over for two. We take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus six, plus two. I guess we don't die, but we would lose all of our creatures, which we can't afford to do. So they're attacking us with the Kitsune, attacking Wandering Emperor with... Uh, Mountain of one ones. So, actually, just in case they have removal for our creatures, I think we take 14 here. So I know for certain that I will have the creatures left to use this kunai next turn. So if I end up blocking ku Oh, I've... I didn't see Sashiro was attacking me. I uh, probably would have blocked then, because then I would be dead to a kunai. Yeah, I, I would have. Uh, I would have chomped the double striker with the moth. Had I seen that. But yeah, if it was just Kitsune, I don't think I blocked there because then if they after that just use removal on my last creature, it's like all right, well we're we're a goner. All right, kunai. Number two. Shoot the face. Oh my god. Oh, that was a stressful game. That was terrifying. Massive Goshintai armies flying around. We got so close in the sky earlier in that game, but then didn't quite get there. And then just double kunai in the end is going to lead us into three and two. At least a 50-50 win rate run to end it. Pretty happy with that, but we'll see how things continue as we head into round six. Here we are now in the final game, potentially game seven or no game six. We're three and two right now uh, against number six mythic. And I'm very tempted to just keep the farewell hand here and hope to hit a forest. Um, and so I'm going to do that. I'm going to see if I get to farewell the mythic drafter. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, we immediately drew our green source at least, but uh, that is a red deck with a turn one creature to play. This could be very bad. Yep, this is going to be the mono red aggro. 
or at least just red-based aggro, which can be very powerful when it is underdrafted in your pod. If you just go for the really, really cheap stuff, you can punish a lot of the slower decks. Which I don't think my deck is as slow as a lot of the decks in the format can be, but uh, it's not that fast. Especially this hand. This hand is really slow. This hand can get punished by aggro. Get rid of the sling here. Not really ramping into anything super well. Alright, we've got a bank buster coming down. Only stuck on two lands at least here. There's the third mana. Take two down to 15. It's an ace. It's fine. This is crew three, though, so that's not going to happen. Still just going to play this here. Big enough to block those one ones all day. Voltage surge the ace. Um, Pretty cool safekeeping here. It's going to slow our opponent down a lot. We really need to leave a creature on board for befriending the moths and stuff to actually do something. Yeah, this slows our opponent down a lot because we keep the 2-2, we gain 2 life as well when we play this. If they have another removal spell, they get to still kill the ace, but they had to throw 2 removal spells at it at least. Alright, Song Shaper. Yeah, and then they have no attacks this turn. I don't love befriending the moths here, so I'm going to commune and see if I get a better play. True Kai Naturalist feels better to me. Actually not leaning into Farewell that much this game, because I'm just going to go for Bank Buster value instead. Should be blocking all day long. The, um... I could crew this in response. Then I have one 4-4 four, four first strike blocker instead of one 2-2 two, two blocker. Sure. That is going to do two damage to me, though, because they have a modified creature. All right, they're going to pass turn. Let's draw our card. We've got all the farewell mana. My friend, some moths here. Not exactly attacking right now, though. Seismic Wave, two damage to that, and one damage to all my other non-artifact creatures. All right, you got it. Don't have the power to crew the Bank Buster, so they get in for four this turn. And now I can Farewell on creatures only. I keep my Bank Buster, I keep my Befriending the Moths, get rid of three of their cards. Should hopefully be good enough here. Experimental Synthesizer, that can draw them into some more stuff. Some cards off the top. No land for that Circuit Mender though, really rough draw for our opponent. And now we just overwhelm them with creatures that are way too big for their little aggro cards. Friending the Moss and Reign of Truth, I'll put Reign of Truth up first, that's more damage, but those are both great draws. Alright, they get their Samurai, dig for land off the top. They do get the land this time. So that was a good Synthesizer hit to make up for the last one. Kumano faces Kakazan, really aggressive one drop. Damage to me, then they get a counter on a creature, and then they... Uh... Um, get a 2-2 haste. Just hit for a million here with both these sagas. Fourteen to be exact puts them down to six, and we still have both of these triggering next turn for well over lethal. 
Michiko's Reign of Truth and Befriending the Moths. Some really rough draws from the aggro deck from our opponent here. Alright, they're not out of it yet, because now they have a reach blocker. So they can block one of these things. So spread out the damage so we know we're putting them to one at least. They block that, take the five. Um, can crew Bankbuster force them to block there? Actually don't have the creature to crew this anymore. Is that not big enough? Yeah, this is pretty simple. Just attack these two. We don't have the three power to crew that, so that's not getting in. So we don't get to force the chump. All right. They are still at one. All right, there is the concession again. Some really rough draws from our opponent stuck on that that cheap mana there. They did have a lot of those one drops to start getting aggro, but luckily we did draw onto the, the kind of two twos and stuff we needed to block that early aggro. So that's going to be four and two now, pretty much breaking even. 1,400 gems out of this event no matter what. Really nice record throughout these Kamigawa drafts. Really nice time overall. All right, here we go. Round seven, four and two here. Great hand, definitely keeping. Nice curve, good way to use our Befriending the Moths. Tossing that on our Selfless Samurai. Well, now they've got a Bamboo Grove Archer, which don't really want to run a Samurai into, but I'd be okay to run a 3-3 Kitsune Ace into that. So if I befriending the moss this up, that's pretty fine by me. I also could just play Samurai and equip the Kunai to the Ace. I'm not going to throw a Fade into Antiquity as, at the 3-3 three, three Defender here. But I would throw a Kunai at it. Alright, we have the Farewell in the future. We'll drop our Samurai, equip our Kunai, and pass the turn. Next turn we can blow up the Bamboo Grove Archer. They'll respond by crewing the Bank Buster, though, so we still won't get an attack in that turn. So that is worth uh, considering. I guess I could exile the Bank Buster, but... I don't feel like that's super worth it. I mean, we're countering three card draws from them eventually, but they have to dump a bunch of mana into that, so we know they're not committing to the board. Honestly, I, f I feel like I would rather just keep going my, my aggro line here and let them draw their cards. I don't know, I mean... It's too late to fade into Antiquity well here, because if I fade into Antiquity now, then they just draw the card anyway. They draw one card. Maybe fade into antiquity last turn was pretty good. Just stuck to my initial line too much. Yeah, I don't think fade into antiquity is good anymore, but it would have been good last turn. I will trade my Kitsune Ace into the Bamboo Grove Archer. I am cool with that. We get to leave our Kunai around for something else. They're going to draw their card. We get the trade. Blossom Prancer is the play. That's a huge value play. It's a huge value play, and it has reach. It has hidden reach. I almost forgot about the hidden reach. 
and was going to run something right into that. Cameo's completion is their draw. Things are looking less and less good for us here. Tempted to fade into antiquity. But I can just farewell everything they do in the future. And we're just leaning in on that. Otherwise our opponent's so far ahead. So I'm just going to try to get everything with farewell. Yeah, we're pretty dead here. Our opponent has a million cards. I should have faded the bank buster on uh, the one turn before they drew any cards off of it. At this point, there's really nothing we can do to be anything but massively behind in card advantage. Even if we got the bank buster, they'd still have like four cards in hand here because Blossom Prancer and we can't get through Prancer. Which just looks like a very nice deck from our opponent. It's going to be abysmally difficult to get through, to get anything done here. Just Blossom Prancer is such a nuts card. It blocks everything in my deck. And I have kind of no way to kill it. Except for farewell. And they don't have to farewell. They have the winning board state, so they can. Or they don't have to run any more creatures out into the farewell, because they can just sit here, sitting behind their prancer, drawing more cards. Don't seem that good right now. Another air is fine though. Can't believe how much of a brick wall Blossom Prancer is for my deck. Five mana for a 4 4. Draw the card out of your top four and your opponent cannot attack for the rest of the game. Complete my samurai. Sure. So when we farewell later, currently creatures and artifacts looks pretty good to me. All right, we take four. They ninjutsuing a blossom prancer. I don't really have a choice here. I can lose a creature for no value, or I can let them ninjutsu and draw another card. This feels unwinnable. This is just the mega value deck here. Get another two for one off of prancer. Another Tamiyo's completion. I would have scooped already if I wasn't recording, but final game of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty will play it out, even though there's just like no shot. This lands out of here. I can still fade the bank buster. I really don't think it matters. Opponent has so much other two for one value. I'm still going to just be as greedy as possible with this farewell. I played this game very, very poorly. The best line would have been the fade turn three on the bank buster. But again, game doesn't change too much from that point on. As soon as they drop this Blossom Prancer, we're just sitting here. Waiting for them to outvalue us with Blossom Prancer alone instead. All right, Prosperous Thief, come on out. Hello. Past turn. Searchlight Companion is fine. May just be holding on to farewell for dear life, though. Yeah, whatever.
If their hand ever gets to like three or less cards, I'm going to slam down Farewell. But that doesn't seem super likely. Their deck is just chocked full of value. They have Roadside Reliquary as a land as well that they can sacrifice to draw two cards at basically any time. Okay, let's make sure they can't ninjutsu this Blossom Prancer. There's first strike damage, and then I'll shoot it. Sky Turtle to put it back in their hand. Good gravy. Cease with the value, please. They don't want to cast it off their treasures. They're going to hold up Tamiyo's completion instead. <sighs> Alright, Commune, what do you have? Reign of Truth. Befriending the Moths. Reign of Truth is big. We actually have the slightest... No, we don't have the slightest chance, because they're going to complete our Moth in response. Still our best pickup. Threaten them with this moth, and then they'll have to tap it down with Tamiyo's completion. Or not. Or we get to hit for six. We get to hit for six. Maybe they're going to complete the Reign of Truth instead, or they really want to just hold on to these treasures. Still kind of holding on farewell here. It's never gonna pan out though, because with their stupid like recasting Blossom Prancer every other turn, it's just always gonna be like a five card hand. Oh, and they have Spinning Wheel Kick for a three for one as well. That explains the lack of Tamiyo's completion. Just a value train dot deck. That was an unwinnable matchup if I've ever seen one. Played really poorly though to uh, to top off the the loose plays draft. That's what we'll call this one. This was the loose draft. But good lord, was I never beating that deck? Tons of huge, nice value plays in there. Got the two big bombs, but we don't have a nice, consistent core to this deck. A lot of mediocre stuff. Even our sagas like Befriending Moss is kind of just like fine. It actually played a lot better than I thought it would. Um, but yeah, most of our deck, like none of this is like huge value plays at all. There's just some nice cards like Tails, uh, Reign of Truth. These are like nice. Kind of just all in on the two bombs today and got a pretty accurate uh, record to the quality of the deck. Just like a 4-3 there, really running off the coattails of these bombs. But Pretty nice record in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty overall. Definitely had a fun time with it. It is a great draft format. It was nice to have it back. But that is going to end the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty drafts, and that is going to end today's video. Next week, these next five days, we have Streets of New Capenna premiere drafts coming back. Play a couple of those. And then we have a cube draft after those are over. And the big news, if you haven't heard this, at least it's big news for me, is that after about a week and a half of cube drafts, initially they just said they were going to have cube drafts throughout the whole month till September 1st. But after the first week and a half of cube drafts, um, around August 17th or something like that, or 20th, I don't know, somewhere around there, they are doing more flashback premiere drafts. So we're going to have... Kami, no Kamigawa, Kaladesh Remastered Premiere Drafts for five days, and then Amonkhet Remastered Premiere Drafts for five days, which I'm super excited about. I really liked those formats the first time they came out in paper. Uh, Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, 
Almond Cat and Hour of Devastation. Specifically, I liked Hour of Devastation and Kaladesh a lot as draft formats. So, uh, and I didn't get to play the remastered versions that much. I didn't play them them all that much. So I'm definitely going to do probably five di- drafts a piece of each of those. Have those be the daily videos for those five days. Those premier draft formats are off. So huge stuff for limited players this month. Capenna, Cube, Almond Cat, Kaladesh, and then... Starting in September, Dalmanar United, the new draft format is coming out, and we'll be hopping into that head first. So lots of great stuff on the horizon if you're interested. As always, you can like, comment, and subscribe so the YouTube algorithm know to send you some more of these videos if you want to see all that cool stuff coming on the horizon. But once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.